Hey guys, welcome back to the Learn to Play series. Today we welcome back designer John Butterfield and he's going to walk us through how to play World War II Commander Battle of the Bulge. This is the first in a series of easy to play war games covering famous battles of World War II. And this is a perfect time to cover this one as we recognize the 78th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. So without further ado, over to you, John. Hi everyone, this is John Butterfield, and I'm going to be showing you the game uh, World War II Commander Battle of the Bulge from Compass Games. It's been out for a few years, and we're going to have a second volume in this series coming out next year on Operation Market Garden. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to teach this one to get uh, people familiar with the system, not only to play this game, but also to look forward to the next. So the series of games, they're fast and simple two-player war games, and they're on, each one's on a key battle of World War II. It uses an area-based movement and unit location system. So we're going to look at the map here first. This, of course, is, is a map of the area of, of Belgium and Germany where the Battle of the Bulge occurred, and it's divided into spaces. Every space has borders, and the rivers also act as borders to spaces. So right here is the space of Spa, and over here is the space of St. Sanvith. There's four levels of terrain. There's clear terrain, there's broken terrain, there's woods, and there's forest. And then some of the spaces have a town or a city. And some of those towns and cities are worth victory points, as noted by the red VP number. The terrain types each have a consistent modifier that helps the defender. And that's what the little numbers are in many of the spaces. So a wood space like Trapont has a minus two, which means a defender there gets to subtract two hits if they're attacked in combat. Uh, some spaces have two modifiers. That means you use the, the minus two for the forest. But if you control the space, you get to instead use the minus three for the town and forest combined in that space. In this game, every space is controlled by one side or the other. The game starts with the Western allies, the green units, controlling every space on the board except those with one of these German control markers. Those are controlled by the German player at, uh, when the game begins. If, if a space is occupied by units of both sides, which is possible, it's still controlled by the one who was there first. So these spaces here with, with units from both sides are controlled by the, the allied player. When the Germans take control of the space, they'll place a marker there uh, as they move forward. Also in some of the spaces, there are little artillery symbols. That gives the German side an advantage in their attacking in those spaces to represent the heavy German artillery that was at the front line, but it was really unable to move forward to keep up with the offensive. All right, so the units in the game are infantry units like this one, motorized units like this, and armor units or tanks like this one. Every unit has a strength from one to six, and that represents not only the number of dice that it gets to roll in combat, but also how many hits it can take. Every time a unit takes a hit, it loses one strength point. So the unit's flipped over or replaced with another unit. And the second number in the lower right corner is its hit chance. So it rolls a certain number of dice in combat, and they're 10-sided dice, and it hits if it rolls this number, in this case, three or less. So if it rolled a one, two, or three, it gets a hit against the enemy. If it rolls a four through 10, it's a miss. Some of the strengths have a plus, that means they get to roll an extra die in combat. So their, their strength in terms of how many hits they can take for this unit is two, but in combat it gets to roll an extra die, so it has a little more firepower. Units also show the, the ID, the name of the unit, and where it begins play, or if it enters as a reinforcement, the turn and location where it enters as a reinforcement. Now, the map is a little bit bigger than what you're seeing here on screen. It goes down to uh, uh, Arlon and up to Liège. We have the entire east-west view of the map uh, on screen. 
Now, every space on the board can hold up to three units of each side. So up here in this space in the corner, there are three German units. There could also be three allied units in that space. And the units move space to space. Every unit can move one space regardless of terrain. The motorized units and armor units can move two spaces if they're moving along a road, the red lines running through many of the spaces or roads. But if there's no road, a unit can move only one space. All the allied units and the German mechanized units can also do strategic movement, which means they can move three spaces by road only. But if they do that, they can't leave or enter an enemy occupied space. Space control also determines where units can move. A unit can only move into an enemy controlled space or a contested space. Contested means there's units of both sides in it if they're coming from a friendly controlled space. So for example, this German unit here, which is in a friendly controlled German space, uncontested, could move to any adjacent space it wants. But these units here are in a allied contested space. These German units cannot move to there because uh, they're in an allied controlled space and it's also a contested space. They can't go to there even though it's empty because that's an allied controlled space. They could move back to a friendly space. So if you're in a contested space or enemy controlled space, you can only move to a friendly space. Uh, and that helps like create the, the concept of a front line, e even though you're adjacent to an enemy space, you can only move there if you've kind of taken control of the space you're in. Rivers also have an effect on movement, which I'll get into as we start moving units. Also on the board is the calendar, which is in some games called the game turn track. The game is played in days. We begin with some German surprise turns and then we move into December 16th. And every day the players take turns activating their units. If I'm a German player, I activate units in one space and move them or fight with them. And then the allies get to activate units in one space and move and fight with them. And then as units are activated, they're marked because they can only be activated once per day. Then every time there's an activation, time advances along this track here. And when it gets to the end of the time track, the day is over, even if there are units left unactivated at that time. Also on the board is the victory point track up here. The Germans start with zero victory points and they win the game by achieving a certain number of victory points and they lose the game if they don't have a certain number of victory points. And that's shown on the uh, calendar here. Uh, on December 20th, if at the end of December 20th, the Germans, if they don't have at least four victory points, the Allies win the game. But if the Germans have 12 or more victory points, the Germans win the game at that point. And then there's a similar check every other game turn until the end of the game. And, and those, those victory threshold, thresholds change as the game progresses. The German side earns VPs for controlling VP spaces, like St. Thief is worth one, that stone down here is worth two. And they can also earn VPs by getting a unit across the Meuse River, which is the river over here. They, they get a one-time award of three VPs that they can't lose. Whereas if, if they gain a VP town and then lose it, they, they lose the VP again. They also can earn VPs by exiting units off the board uh, in these spaces with the yellow triangles. It's difficult to do, but it can uh, really win the game if they can get units off the board. So that's how VPs are gained and lost. So the game begins, as I mentioned, with some German surprise turns. So this time marker over here is sitting on German surprise turn one. The Germans will get three of these surprise turns and then things will reset and December 16th proper will, will begin. During these surprise turns, only the Germans take three turns in a row. The Allies don't get any because they're surprised. So we're going to start the game with 
these three surprise turns and I'll demonstrate how some German movement and attacks work. There are a couple other restrictions during the surprise turns. The German armor units, their mechanized units, actually can't move. They can attack if they're in a space with enemy units, but the armor units can't move. This was part of the German strategy to be very quiet during these surprise turns, so only their infantry was actually on the move. They didn't want the noise of armor to wake up the uh, Western allies. So the Germans will get three activations. The first one they're going to choose to do will be here in the space called Blialf, there is the German 116th Panzer Division and the German 560th Volksgrenadier Division. The infantry unit here has the option to move, but they're not going to. They're going to stay here and attack with the Panzer unit, with the armor unit, which is allowed to attack without moving. So in a combat, Each unit is going to roll dice equal to its strength, and both sides will be doing that, and the fire will be considered simultaneous. The effects of the fire will be to to get hits on the enemy units, and the hit chance for each unit is also printed on the counter. For an armor unit, an elite armor unit like this, there are two hit chances. They use the one in red, which is a five, when they're attacking, and the and the one in black when they're firing in defense. Most units only have the black, which they then use for offense and defense. So our armor unit is going to get to roll five dice because it has a little plus next to its four. So that's a bonus die when uh, involved in combat. So it will roll five dice and hit on a, it would be a five or less. However, there are modifiers to combat. And some of these are very much to the advantage of the German player at the start of the game. They get a plus one to their hit chance if there's an artillery symbol in the space. And also because it's December 16th, they get a plus one to their chance to hit. So this armor unit is actually has a chance to hit of seven instead of five. There are other modifiers which could apply, but none of them apply in this particular situation. So our our German armor unit will roll five dice. So the dice rolls were a five, a five, a seven, and a seven, and a 10. So our armor unit got four hits, which is a lot because it was hitting on a seven or less. And it rolled a five, five, seven, seven, ten. So that's four hits already. Now we'll keep that in mind. And then the infantry unit gets to roll two dice. It doesn't have a plus, so it's rolling just two dice. And it would be hitting on threes. But because of the artillery and the 16th of December bonus, it's hitting on fives. So it rolled a four and an eight. So it got one hit it was going to hit on five or less. So that's a total of five hits by the Germans against the allied unit here. Now it gets to fire. So the allied unit gets to roll one die and would hit on threes. However, if you're firing at an armor unit that's reduced by one, so the allied unit will only hit on a one or a two. And it got very lucky and rolled a one. So it will do a hit to the Germans. So hits are applied by reducing the strength of a unit. And if you're the defender, you can also absorb a hit by retreating. The attacker can't retreat. So in this case, the Germans are attacking, so they need to take a hit. I have the option to, as the German player, to apply the hit to either unit, and I will choose to apply it to infantry unit. So the infantry unit will decrease its strength to a one. Now the allied unit has to take five hits. Now the terrain has a minus one in it. So that subtracts one defender hit. The unit can retreat, say to there, which is actually the only place it could retreat because you can't retreat into an enemy controlled space or an enemy occupied space. So that satisfies a second hit. 
but then it has three more hits it must take. So when it takes the next hit, it is eliminated because it has only one step. So that is the outcome of the attack. The Germans now are in control of Blialf because they are now the sole occupant. So I'm going to put a German control marker in there to uh, indicate that. There's no advance after combat in this game. However, after December 16th, it is possible to do a breakthrough move if you're armor. And, uh, but maybe we'll demonstrate that uh, after December 16th. It's not, there were too many German traffic jams on December 16th to allow breakthroughs. So that was the first German activation. I'm going to move this time marker up to there to indicate that the first one is done. And the German units that were activated get a black cube. It's a wooden cube in the actual game, just to mark that they are done for the surprise turns. They did their activation. So the second activation is going to be these two infantry units. I would like to activate this nice strong panzer, but in the surprise turns, they can't move, so they wouldn't be able to attack anything where they are. So these two units are going to attack this Allied Cavalry unit. Both of the German units can roll three dice because they have a plus with their strength of two. So that's a total of six dice. I'm totaling them together because they have the same hit chance. So I can just kind of roll one group of dice. Now, like in the other space, there is a artillery symbol here. And it is December 16th, so these German guys will be hitting on a five, rolling six dice, hitting on a five. So I roll the six dice, and it's off board, but I got two hits, a little unlucky for the Germans. So one of those hits is absorbed by the terrain, and the other hit, the cavalry unit will satisfy by retreating into St. Vith. However, before it retreats, it does get its its shot. It will roll one die because its strength is one, hitting on a three, and that strength is not reduced. I'm not firing at any armor. So one die rolling on threes, I roll, and it's a five, so that's a miss. So the cavalry doesn't hit the attackers, but it does survive by retreating to here. The two hits one, that it received, one was absorbed by the train and the other satisfied by the retreat into Sun Beath. So now these infantry units control Losheim. We will put a German control marker in Losheim to indicate that. That's the second surprise turn. So there's one more. So our third German attack is going to be here in the space of Clairvaux. There's an infantry unit there, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm activating this space and the armor unit can't move, but the infantry unit can. So its move is going to be into Clairvaux to attack this unit. Now, when you attack, you include all the units in the space, even if a unit already there wasn't you know, activated in this activation, the, the fact that a combat is occurring in its space kind of automatically activates the unit. So these two units are going to attack this. They have a combined strength of eight, hitting on threes. There are no other modifiers other than the ones we've been using in, in the uh, other spaces for the Germans. That is, there is an artillery symbol here, and it is December 16th. So they're hitting on fives instead of threes. So rolling eight dice, hitting on fives, we roll and we get three hits, uh, which will be enough to kill this unit. But first it gets its shot. It rolls one die, hitting on threes. The three isn't modified. It rolls and rolls a two. So it does do a hit against the Germans. The German player decides to assign the hit to this unit. And then the allied unit has to take three hits. One is absorbed by the space. Now there is a two here. However, this modifier 
cannot be greater than the strength of the unit. If this unit were a two or greater in strength, it would get a minus two for the terrain. But since it's only a one, it just gets a minus one for the terrain. So one hit is absorbed by the terrain. Another hit could be absorbed by a retreat, say to here. But then the third hit has to be satisfied by losing a strength point, which in this case eliminates the unit. So that unit is eliminated and the Germans take control of Clairvaux. So we put a German control marker there. Oh, and, and these units here should have been marked with cubes and then likewise these units with cubes. So that's the situation at the end of the third surprise attack. Now, the surprise turns are over, so we're going to start the December 16th turn proper. I move the day marker to December 16th, and I move this time marker up here to this time track. From now on, every day will have alternating turns by the players equal to the number of of hours in this. Now, this timer is uh, the timer marker is advanced only after the the first player's turn. In this case, the Germans, the first player, they have the initiative until uh, partway through the game when the allies get the initiative when the weather clears. Uh, but until then, the Germans are the first player and have the initiative every turn. Every time they perform an activation, this marker will be advanced along the track. And when it gets to the last space, the player without the initiative will get one more turn and the day will end. Now, because we're kind of starting the day over, these activation cubes come off. We are now starting the 16th. It is the Germans go first on the 16th, so they're taking the next turn. And there's a couple additional special rules throughout the first day. No allied infantry units can move. They kind of didn't wake up yet. So only the allied motorized units can move on this day. So the allies can't do all that much on December 16th. However, the allies can use strategic movement, which means those units that can move can move up to three spaces as long as they don't enter an enemy-occupied space. The Germans can't do strategic movement on turn one, again, because they were having issues with traffic jams. They will be able to starting on December 17th. So for the first activation, December 16th, the Germans will choose to activate this space. That is, all the units in the space, which is just one, will be activated and can move and then fight. So this is the first SS Panzer Division. It is mechanized. It can move two spaces if moving along a road. So it's going to move through here to here and then attack this armor unit here. So I'm going to move this here so that you can see the modifiers in the space. You can see that this has a minus two, which will help the uh, armor unit uh, in defense. The minus three won't be helpful because the unit only has a strength of two. Our uh, first SS Panzer unit will be rolling seven dice in this attack. It's six plus a bonus die. It has a hit chance of five. If it was defending, it would be a four. And it, there is artillery. German artillery is able to reach the space. And it is December 16th. So our first SS Panzer is, has a hit chance of seven. So it will roll seven dice hitting on sevens. The uh, German player rolls that and ends up getting four hits on this unit. Now, this unit, oh, wait, I made one, one error there. In this case, the first SS is firing at armor, so its hit chance is reduced by one, so it was uh, hitting on sixes. Luckily, in that die roll, there weren't any sevens rolled, luckily for the Germans. So it is still four hits uh, out of the seven dice on the armored unit. The uh, allied armor unit gets to fire back. It has a strength of two and a hit chance of four. 
its hit chance is reduced by one because this is armor. So it's two dice hitting on threes. So it rolls and gets one hit. It rolled a two and a seven. So the attacking German unit must take a hit. So it does so. So it's down to a five still with the bonus. The allied unit must satisfy four hits. Now in the forest, it gets a minus two hits. So now it only has to satisfy two hits. So it will choose to retreat to Trapont for the third hit, and it will take a step for the fourth hit. So it survived just barely. The first SS Panzer unit now takes control of Malmedy. All right. So the Germans took control of Malmedy. The allied unit survived. Now a cube, I'm, I mean, placed on the First SS Panzer unit, because it's done for the day. And the Allied unit, because it chose to retreat, is also done for the day. If you retreat, you that's that counts as an activation. So he will not be able to move. Okay, so now finally the Allies get their first turn. The Germans, because they have initiative, they move this time marker up. Uh, and now it's the Allied turn. The allies can only move their motorized units. So they could move this guy or this guy or this guy or this guy. Looking at the situation, this guy here is looking pretty vulnerable. He could be attacked from several directions and probably killed. So the allied player is going to move him. Now he has the choice of moving him one, two, or if he doesn't enter an enemy controlled space, three spaces. So he's just going to move back two spaces to Hoffelis, and he's going to hang out there. And then when he does so, we mark him as finished. So that was the first U.S. turn. Now it's the German turn again. So the Germans... They'd like to attack here. Now, there's a rule that a given river boundary, such as between Clairvaux and Lulange, can only be crossed by one unit if there's an enemy unit across the river. This reflects that the, the bridges there are, are blown or interdicted. So I can't actually move both these guys in there. I could move one in, I could move the other guy somewhere else. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to have him go into there, which will automatically will initiate a combat. And this guy is going to cross this bit of river into here. Now, since he went in there and there's no allied unit there, that space will become German controlled. This space is not yet German control because the allies were there first. So now we have a combat. The German infantry is at a disadvantage here. It crossed a river into a space that was solely enemy controlled. So when it attacks, the defender is going to get a plus one on its fire because all attacking units entered the spaces turned by crossing a river. So that's going to help the allies. So the German infantry unit is rolling four dice, hitting on threes. There is no artillery in this space. So the Germans don't get the plus one for that. They do get the plus one for it being December 16th, but they get a minus one on their hit chance because they're firing at armor. So the 26 Volksgrenadier will be rolling four dice, hitting on threes. They roll and they get a three, five, six, eight. So they get only one hit against the armor. The armor unit rolls two dice and it's hitting on fours and it gets a plus one because the guys were coming across the river at them. So their hit chance will be a five. So they roll two dice and they get a four and a 10. So that's one hit uh, against the infantry so the the attacking infantry takes a hit and armor 
has to satisfy one hit. It doesn't get any help from the terrain. The modifier there is a, is a zero. So the armor can either retreat one or take a hit and stay. I think they like the idea of going to Bastogne, so they're going to do that. And that because they retreated, that means they are considered activated. So they get a cube. This guy gets a cube, and this guy gets a cube. Now, since that was a German activation, we advance the time marker, and it's the next uh, allied turn. Now, the allies can pass if they want. If you don't have the initiative, you can pass, and then you, you can still go after that. If both players pass consecutively, the day will actually end. The Germans won't want to do that. They want to keep going. So the allies are, yeah, right now they will. No, they're not going to pass. They're going to activate this armor unit down here, and it's going to strat move one and it has to do that on a row but it can go three spaces so that's one and all the spaces have to be um if it's a strat move have to be friendly spaces so it goes three to there so that was the allied activation he's just moving back so we can help with the defense as the germans move forward okay so the next german activation is going to be these two here in the space of Blialf uh, will be activated. The armor unit can go two spaces along a road. And so it will just move up. It enters St. Vif, which gives control and a victory point to the Germans there. And we'll move our victory point marker up one to indicate that. And then the unit continues moving into Ville Psalm taking control of that space. The infantry unit can only move one space, so it'll just move up to St. Vid. All right, that's a German activation. Now the allies can go. They only have one unit left that can move, and they're going to, uh, that's this guy here, they're going to pass and wait and see what the Germans do next. Germans are going to activate this armor unit here and move it up two spaces next to Bastogne. Oh, we should have put a German control marker in Lulange. There we go. He's marked done as we should have also marked them done. Okay, so that was another German activation. The Allies will pass again. Now the Germans will activate this space up here in the corner, and they're going to move him to there. They're going to move the armor unit one, two to there. You can have up to three units in a space, and they're going to leave this guy here just to protect their flank. So we put finished markers on those units. Yeah, so note that this guy moving into here cube doesn't cause these guys to become activated. They're just there. If there was an enemy unit there, they all would have attacked and those, those two infantry would have become activated. The allies, now that they've seen what the Germans are doing in this area, the allies will go ahead and activate this guy. The road network isn't in his favor. He can move back here, but it's not by road. That's as far as he can get. And that's what he'll do. All right, now it's the German turn again. They're now going to activate these two guys and their infantry. So they'll just move up one into here. Now they're threatening Spa for next turn. Now that's a victory space. Mark these guys finished and advance the time. Okay, the allies are done for the day. They can't move their infantry. All right, the Germans will activate these two. Okay, and he'll move into there and we'll have to attack him. 
Now he, like uh, in the earlier situation, this soldier can't move into there because you both units can't cross the same river into a space that was uh, totally enemy controlled. Uh, so he's going to move into there instead. And then we'll conduct this attack here. He will be rolling two dice, hitting on threes, but it is the 16th and there is artillery. So he's hitting on fives. He will fire back one die with, with a hit chance of three. However, the German crossed the river into the space. So it'll be a hit chance of four. So German rolls two dice, trying to get fives, but rolls a six and an eight. So that's a miss. The West rolls, the Western allies roll one die, needing a four, and they roll a three. So uh, that is a hit on the Germans. Reduce his strength to one, and the Allied unit is unaffected. So does not get a, uh, well, doesn't matter, he can't move, but he doesn't get an activation cube, the German does. That's one more. Okay, now the Germans have a couple moves left they could make. The Allies are passing. The Germans will activate this, Panzer Lair, and he can move two spaces, and he will move to here. That's finished. We advance to here. And now the allies have to pass again. So the Germans will activate this fellow back here, this one strength armor, and move it two spaces to here. It's finished. And then that advances the time to the last space of the time track. If the allies were able to move anything, they could now go and then the day ends. So in this case, the day ends, the Germans didn't have enough time to move this unit or these units to activate or those units. So they stay where they are. That is the end of December 16th. Go on to December 17th. And so we advance the day marker to here. We put the time marker back to the beginning of the day. So it'll start going again. At the start of a day, there are a few things you do. You put the time marker back at the beginning. We remove all activation cubes. We check for supply for the allies. The Germans don't start checking for supply until the 19th of December, but starting on the 17th, the allies have to check. And you're in supply if you can trace a, a path to a friendly map edge, which for the allies is, is basically every, every space along a map edge, except the spaces along the east map edge, including the corner spaces are for the Germans only, and then the spaces along the east map edge. So if you can trace a path free of enemy controlled spaces from where you are, you're in supply. So all of the allied units can do that, including this one, he can trace down through here. This guy here, as long as you're on a friendly map edge, you're in supply, even if you're surrounded. So he will always be in supply there. Now this unit here can't trace supply. He's completely surrounded by German controlled spaces. So he will get an out of supply marker. That does a couple things. It reduces his hit strength to a two as noted on the out of supply marker. And he becomes already activated. He can't do anything. And if uh, he's attacked, the, the, the firing strength of the attackers is increased by two. Uh, so it's pretty bad being out of supply. So that's the supply check that we do at the beginning of a turn. We don't check for German supply, although I think in this case they would all be in supply anyway. Also at the start of the turn, we check for reinforcements. So both players, in order of battle card, which shows units that enter play at certain points in the game, that all the units depicted up here are the ones that are already on the board. So down here 
is the German reinforcement, but it doesn't enter until the 18th. So the Germans have no reinforcements on the 17th. The Allies do have some reinforcements on the 17th. And in fact, they have one, two, three reinforcement units, and they are placed in the map edge area with the letter. So this unit here says it's the 1st Infantry Division, and it comes in on the 17th in area G, and that is here. So that unit comes in there, and this unit also comes in in G, and the third unit comes in at C, which is on the southern map edge. So he comes in down here. If this space happened to be German controlled and occupied, this unit could instead come here because that's also a C space. If at some point they were both occupied, a unit but by the Germans, a unit that would be scheduled to come in would have to be delayed a turn, and then it could come in on any friendly map edge. So the Allies get some much needed help with these three units as reinforcements. And that's it for the reinforcements on the 17th. Now, on the 17th or 18th, once per game, the Germans can do a commando operation, which Right now, they would be given the option to do their commando operation. If they do it on the 17th, they can't do it on the 18th. And they, they would like to do it now because what the commando operation does, it basically activates one allied unit. That is, it's done. It can't do anything during the day. It's, you place a cube on the unit. So the German player is going to do their commando operation and place an activation cube on this unit here. So that means it won't be able to do anything on this game turn. But that now their commandos are done. They won't be able to use the next turn or any other turn in the game. Then we're ready to start the, the 17th. Uh, the Germans again have the initiative, so they will go first. And they have several options here. They could activate these two units and immediately attack Bastogne before it can be reinforced. They could jump into Spa with some of these guys. They could move forward into there. They could even move two spaces into there because there's no river. Well, that is the, the armor unit could move two spaces into there. So there's a lot of opportunity but I think what the Germans will try to do is try to take Bastogne before it can be reinforced. So they're going to activate him and him and come into Bastogne. So here we go. The armor unit has a strength of five because of its bonus and a hit chance of five. However, that hit chance is reduced by one because of the allied unit being armored. There is no artillery symbol in this space, and it is no longer the 16th. So the Germans do not have that bonus anymore. This unit will be rolling five dice hitting on fours. So here we go. The five dice are rolled. It gets a two, three, six, seven, eight. And that is two hits on the armor unit. Those two will be absorbed because of this modifier. So let's see if the infantry can make some headway. The infantry unit gets three dice because of its strength of three hitting on threes, but that is again reduced by one because firing at armor. So it's three dice hitting on twos. So we roll for that and they get a two, five, 10. So that's one hit. So the total hits against the allied defender is three. Now the allies do get their shot. They have two dice hitting on fours. 
The attackers include armor, so that hit chance is reduced by one. So they are two dice hitting on threes. So they roll and they get a two and a nine. So that's one hit. So the Germans will take that hit on the infantry unit. So that's the net effect on the Germans. Now the allies, uh, two hits were absorbed by the, the town in the woods. They have to satisfy one hit. They could retreat and give up Bastogne, or they could take a step and stay, which is what they're going to do. So the Battle of Bastogne has begun. Because they uh, did not retreat, they are not activated. On these two, we place uh, activation cubes and advance the time one segment. And so now it's the allied turn. They're going to take this guy, this reinforcement unit in Verbeers, and move him down into Spa. Well, the Germans are going to try to take advantage of that. They want to attack here. Because it's allied controlled and there's a river, only one unit can come across into that space. So it will be the big guy here. But since we're activating this space, all three units are activated. So the infantry might as well do something. Actually, one of them will stay here. This guy will move up here. All right. So we have two attacks. This guy's done. But this guy's attack up here, he'll be rolling three dice, hitting on threes. This is a motorized unit, but not armored. So there's no modifier for that. There is no German artillery here. So it's three dice hitting on threes. So the Germans roll three dice and get a 377. That's one hit. And that one hit will be absorbed by the terrain. This is a one strength unit, so it can only get one defensive benefit, which it does get. It's shot, it's rolling one die hitting on threes, and its roll is a four, so that's a miss. So no one takes any casualties here. He gets a marker. This unit is not going to marker because he didn't retreat. He wasn't affected by the combat. So now here is this big attack. They're rolling six dice, hitting on fives, except that they're firing at armor, so it's six dice hitting on fours. And in Trapont, it's a minus two, although the strength there is only a one, so there can only be a one modifier to the hits against the defender here. Okay, so six dice hitting on fours. There's no artillery. So six dice hitting on fours is a three, a four, a five, a seven, a seven, and a nine. So that's only two hits. One will be absorbed and the other can be satisfied by retreat or elimination. Obviously, they will retreat and they will go to there. They have the option. They could have also gone to here or to here but they're going to go to there. They get their shot, though. A one die hitting on fours, reduced by one because firing at armor, hitting on threes. They take a shot, and they roll a five, so they miss. So the attacker is unaffected, gets a finished marker, and control. Actually, we should have placed a control marker here and now in here. Oh, I'm sorry, not, not there, just there. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so that was the second German activation. The Allies, they will reinforce. They're going to activate these two guys here, down here, and bring them both into Bastogne. It's a big counterattack. Because when you, when you enter an enemy-occupied space, even if you control it, you have to attack. So the allies are attacking 
Now, in this case, the Germans are defending. They will get the minus one for the forest, but they won't get the minus two because they don't control the town. The, the town is considered still allied controlled because the allies control the space. So the allies, all the allied units hit on four. So we can just add them all up. They have five dice for this, this unit two dice for this unit and one die for this unit. So they're rolling eight dice, hitting on fours, minus one because they're shooting at armor. So they're hitting on threes. So that's eight dice hitting on threes. So they roll that up and they get uh, three hits, a two, three, three, five, six, six, seven, nine. So they get three hits against the... Germans. Now the Germans, even though they're activated, they still get to fire defensively. So we have here five dice. Now their base hit chance is four. They only use their elite hit chance if they're attacking. So they're five dice hitting on fours, minus one because the allies have armor. So it's five dice hitting on threes. So the armor unit will roll five dice hitting on threes. They get a two, three, seven, eight, nine. So they, that's two hits. And then the German infantry unit is two dice hitting on twos. They roll, they get a four and an eight. So that's a miss. So the Germans take three hits. One is absorbed by the terrain. So if the Germans want to stay, they have to take two hits. They could take just one hit and retreat, but they don't want to do that. So they are going to take the two hits. And if you have more than one hit to apply, you must apply them evenly to the units. So this guy is reduced by one, and this guy is reduced by one. And then the allies, though, have to take two hits. So Again, they have to be applied as evenly as possible. So two units will each take one hit. I don't want to eliminate a unit. So I'm going to take a hit on this one and take a hit on this one. Okay, but here we are now still occupying Bastogne because the space is, is allied controlled. And they all get the finished markers. Okay, so it's the German turn again and we're going to activate them. Panzer Lair will move two spaces into here and the infantry can only move up one. So the infantry is finished. Panzer Lair will now attack this motorized cav unit, rolling five dice hitting on fours. This unit is not armored, so it will be hitting on fours. There is no artillery in this space. So uh, rolling five dice hitting on fours, we got a two, four, nine, nine, ten. So that was two hits on the cav unit. The cav unit gets one shot hitting on threes, but because this is armored, it's one shot hitting on twos. They roll a six, that's a miss. So the cav unit has to take two hits one is absorbed by the terrain. The other, it must satisfy by retreat or elimination. So it will retreat to Manhay. And this guy takes over the space. So we'll put this control marker, extra control marker there. Okay, that was a German activation. Now it's the allies again. He retreated. So he needs to get a finished marker. He retreated, so he should have had one as well. Okay. Now the Western allies, we're going to activate him down here and move him back to Wilts. So that actually gives the German the control of this space. Oh, and they also control this space from last turn. And he now gets a finished marker. So now we're going to activate this panzer unit. And he's going to move two, one, 
to into here. There's no river. It's along a road. So that's an allowed move. And he can immediately attack this guy, even though he was attacked earlier while in another space. That's okay. So the Germans are rolling five dice, uh, hitting on fives. This is not an armor unit. Five dice hitting on fives. And what's the terrain modifier here? A minus one. Okay. And they roll a two, three, five, seven, ten. So that's three hits on the cav unit. Uh, the cav unit gets a shot, one die hitting on twos, and they get lucky and roll a one. So the German has to take a hit. The allies, though, had to take three hits. One was absorbed by the terrain, but the other two will eliminate the unit because it can satisfy one by retreating, but the other must be to take a hit. So this unit is eliminated, and this unit takes control of the space. And in this case, an armor unit eliminated everything in the space. That entitles it to a breakthrough move. And a breakthrough move means you can move one space in any direction, regardless of control. And, and if you enter an enemy occupied space, it doesn't trigger combat. So that is good news for the German. He's actually going to advance into there. And that's a VP for and a control marker for the Germans. So now the Germans have two VP. Right. Now it's the allies' turn. So they're going to activate him. He cannot strat move because he's starting in a German occupied space, but he can move two. So we've got to deal with back here. So we're going to move him back to here. I'm going to activate these two units. And now it's the 17th, so they can strat move. They can move entirely through German controlled spaces. If, they're, if they can move three spaces through entirely German spaces, he could not do this one, two, three, because you can't move three spaces into an enemy occupied space. So he's going to go one, two, three to here, and he's going to go one, two and him a marker and we move this up the western allies they're gonna pull back he's gonna move to there the germans are going to activate here and attack this out of supply guy they will be rolling four dice, hitting on threes, but because there's artillery and he's out of supply, they'll be hitting on sixes. One for the artillery, two for the enemy being out of supply. So that's four dice hitting on sixes. He will get three dice, but only hitting on twos because he's out of supply. So the German roll, they roll four dice hitting on sixes. They get a two, five, six, ten. So that's three hits. The German rolls three dice, hitting on twos, and they get five, nine, ten. So they missed entirely. So they have to take three hits. They still get the benefit of the terrain here. So they only have to take one hit. So they can't retreat. So they lose a step. All right, and the Germans are unaffected, but they do get their ally turn. The This allied unit is going to move there. That will force an attack. So he is attacking him. Four dice hitting on threes. The German unit is an infantry unit. We'll be rolling three dice hitting on threes. The German will have the advantage. Yeah, actually, when the allied move, allies moved out of there, the Germans took control of this, so they get the advantage of the terrain. Okay, for being the defender. So four dice hitting on threes. We roll a 
3399. Hmm. So that's two hits, but they'll both be absorbed because of that. So the, the German is three dice hitting on threes, and he rolls a two, seven, eight. So that's one hit, which the allies must take because they're the attacker. They don't get the defensive benefit when they're attacking. So that is a decrease to them and a finished. Okay, so the Germans are now, uh, he'll just activate and move to there. That's finished. Okay, that moves up one. The allies, I think, are, he could heal activate and move to here and attack. So that's a four dice hitting on threes. They get a two, three, five, nine. So that's two hits against the Germans. I was lucky. The Germans roll two dice hitting on threes. The artillery doesn't count. That only counts when your Germans are attacking. So two dice hitting on threes, and they got a three and an eight. So that's one hit. So the ally do two hits on them, one absorbed by the terrain. So the Germans have the option, because they're defending, of either staying and taking hit or retreating. So uh, they'll retreat. They'll retreat up into here. And that puts a marker on them. The allies must take a hit because they were attacking they can't retreat so that's a reduction there that does give the allies control of the space however so they control that space again and they are done okay all right now the germans they're gonna activate this guy and move him to there Boom. Now the allies, I don't think, yes, the allies can't move anything else. So the Germans will get one more turn and they will use it to, yeah, they'll just bring this guy into here. Okay, so that finishes the second day for the Germans. They made good headway in the middle of the board. That's the end of the 17th. Now we're going to skip ahead and take a look at a further developed situation, like three turns later in the game. Okay, so I wanted to show you the situation a little further into the game. Here we are on December 20th, three days later. And the Germans have made more progress. And because of their progress, there's a rule that if there's a German unit in a hex adjacent to the Meuse River and can trace supply, which this unit, this unit can do, the, the German player gets an extra reinforcement division from the German high command. And so that actually started last turn on the, on the, uh, on the 19th they got a reinforcement that entered play and is, is already has already advanced some. And this turn on the 20th, because the situation still exists, they are placing a reinforcement here. It's placed on the map edge and then can then come into play. So this is a, a, a big advantage for the Germans when they get the momentum of getting next to the Muse, the, the German high command gives them more resources. Other than that, I haven't yet done some of the beginning of day activities except that I, I'm showing the situation here in Spa is that the Americans got themselves trapped. They tried to counterattack out of Revere's into Spa, made some progress, al almost wiped these guys out, but not quite. But in so doing, the Germans were able to attack Revere's and took that. So because of that, starting on the 20th, these allied units could not trace supply. So they are all out of supply. Uh, that's why they're marked. So they're in trouble. The Germans would still have to take some effort to wear them down. It's taken a lot of valuable 
allied units and basically corralled them and, and made them unusable. At this point, we haven't yet entered the West scheduled reinforcements. If we look at the order of battle on the 20th, the Allies get an infantry division in Liège, which is very useful. But unfortunately for the Allies and the, and the German taking of Verviers, the other Allied reinforcement was supposed to enter at Verviers, area G, as noted here. But if a unit can't enter, that is, if its reinforcement spaces are occupied and controlled by the Germans, that unit's delayed a day. So it won't be able to enter until next turn. And when it does enter, it can enter anywhere back here or, or here. Uh, but that does keep an allied unit out of, uh, out of the battle for an extra day. Uh, so that hurts the Allies. Also, on December 20th, replacements start. And this is saying the Germans get one infantry replacement and no armor replacements. The Allies get one infantry and no armor. And you take a replacement simply by adding strength to a unit on the board that can that is in supply. Um, so the Allies are going to add strength to, to this unit here. And we, they do that by increasing its strength by one. And the Germans are going to add its strength to one of their guys in Spa here. So they will add strength here. Uh, just did that to him. So that was uh, their replacement. Uh, usually the, the Allies get more than the Germans uh, in, the, in the later turns. The, these values change. So now we're at the beginning of the 20th. It is still German initiative, so they will be going first. So the strategic situation here is that the Germans do control Bastogne by this point. There is a Allied counterattack force starting to, uh, to build here, but the Germans control Bastogne, and they still control the space they took earlier. And, and they have, in addition... As I, should, as I said, moved adjacent to the Meuse. They even control Harab. They had moved through there during the whole Verveers debacle. So the Germans have a few options here. They, they could continue to try to get across the Meuse by bringing strength up here. In fact, if they don't, the Allies might take that from them. So I, the, the Germans' first uh, action is actually going to be to activate, could be to activate this space here. And because they control all of these spaces, they could strat move this very strong formation all the way up to Herve and get in a position to threaten Liege and, and, and the Muse. Uh, and the infantry unit could, uh, could move into here to, uh, to help out in future. That's a, you know, a valid German first move. The Allies are looking at the situation and, and may consider counterattacking here. They could move this unit in there and attack with all three of them. They could seek to cut off the German unit here by maybe bringing this unit into here. Several options. And so uh, really just to demonstrate the the very dynamic nature of the game as you kind of try, you have to sequence your activation so that you don't get cut off, so that you take advantage of opportunities when they arise before they disappear. Yeah, so that's how the game works. Hope you got a good idea of the mechanics and uh, some of the strategies you can use. As I mentioned earlier, you know, that this is the first game in this series. The next game on Market Garden is on the uh, pre-order on the Compass website, and we hope to have that published by, by next summer. It uses a very similar system with some modifications specific to uh, airborne operations, which I th think you'll find interesting. So thanks for watching, and good luck.